When I asked you how you currently store your filament or how you would like to, I expected a few tips. Instead, I got a huge response, including some fantastic ideas ranging from simple vacuum bags to highly complex vending machines and walk-in dry cabinets. So today we're taking all of that feedback and designing Filament Storage 2.0, built by the 3D printing community. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. In video one of this series, I outlined some of the problems I believe we currently have with filament storage. It needs to be kept dry and clean. We need to store it in a neat, compact way. We need to keep track of what we've got. It needs to be ready to use when we want it. And we need to access everything easily. I asked you if you agreed that we had a problem that needed fixing, and what I got was a resounding yes. What I also got from your comments was a fantastic overview of what the whole 3D printing community was currently doing with their filament. And whilst there were some surprises, it was good to see that I was generally on the right track with my thinking. However, what has become very clear is that there is a much wider variety of needs than I probably realized. And I really want this project to help everyone in the community, not just people who work in a similar way to me. What I've done then is analyzed every single comment posted on that video up to this point and used it to create an outline of a roadmap for moving forward. In this video, I'm gonna show you what people ask for and how we're going to use that information to create Filament Storage 2.0. So first off, when I analyzed every comment, I found two patterns. Half of you have already hacked together your own storage systems, boxes, bags, even wine fridges. The other half are imagining what doesn't yet exist, smart, modular, even automated ways to keep filament dry and organized. That's the gap we're going to bridge with Filament Storage 2.0. Of the comments telling me what you are currently doing, it was another relatively even split. 52% of you use single spool solutions like dry boxes or vacuum bags, and 44% use some sort of multi spool storage like a cabinet. I had some very long and detailed comments from some of you, which I really appreciate. One of the ones that stood out was from Mark Booth 3066, who said, we're currently using a mix of vacuum bags and round tubs, mostly 2000 milliliter, with some 2500 milliliter round tubs for those annoyingly wide spools. Each bag or tub has a desiccant holder and hygrometer frame. This allows us to read humidity without opening the bag. Hiroka said, I have a small collection of spools and I'm storing them in Rubbermaid cereal boxes. I have a humidistat hot glued on the inside facing out and use calcium chloride in a tea infuser bag to keep humidity around 10%. For the cabinet solution, RPM.3D said, I have an Ikea Billy wardrobe with self-made brackets and use aluminium rods and self-made name tag holders. The wardrobe is kind of sealed and has a humidity sensor with a dehumidifier machine, which starts if a defined percentage has been reached. I also created a website slash app for myself to have an overview of my filament and all my spare parts. And Perkin SP or Perkins P said, I have a display fridge that I got from Facebook Marketplace and put a dehydrator in the bottom. I keep around 40 filaments there. There are also a couple of comments with some of you experimenting with inline drying, which is not something I'd given a lot of thought to. However, it doesn't take much to tempt me down a rabbit hole. And after reading these comments, I spent quite a while researching if it's even possible to dry your filament as it's on the way to your printer. This would obviously solve one of the biggest problems in one go and make all of the others a lot easier to solve. And it turns out that technically it is possible. And there are a couple of systems out there that you can buy right now. However, they are horrendously expensive and probably not an option for the vast majority of us. We shouldn't rule this out though, and I think it's definitely worth some further investigation. So we now know what a lot of people are currently doing, but I also asked for ideas on what you would want in an ideal setup. These comments were a lot of fun to read through, and there were some great ideas. Some very practical and doable, and others that would be a real challenge, which could give us some great end goals for this whole project. So what was very interesting to see is that the ideas for the physical storage solutions fit into just four categories. 38% of people want a simple, large, mass storage solutions like a cabinet, but with some of the problems of this method solved or improved. 28% want not only single spool solutions like dry boxes, but there was a clear message that there is a need for active dry boxes, not just boxes that you put some desiccant in. This was very interesting to me and really sparked some ideas for what we can do, which I'll go through shortly. 23% of the requests 
were for some form of automated all-in-one solution, pretty much what I was thinking initially. This would be basically like a vending machine or jukebox where all of your filament is fully maintained and when you want it, you press a button and it's brought to you. Very cool, very complicated and massive overkill for most people. I still think we should do it though. And then finally, around 10% of people want us to look at inline drying, as I mentioned a little while ago. So you asked, let's do it. Those are our four routes for filament storage 2.0. Active single spool dry boxes, large simple cabinet storage, a fully automated vending machine and inline drying. With these four options, I believe there's something for everyone, no matter what scale your filament storage problem. So those are our four directions for filament storage 2.0. And honestly, seeing how many creative ideas came from the community has been amazing. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, who make it incredibly easy to turn those kinds of ideas into real engineered parts. If you've ever wanted to take your 3D printed prototype further, maybe build a custom PCB to control humidity or airflow, get precision CNC machine parts for a cabinet mechanism, or even have a housing injection molded, PCBWay can handle all of it under one roof. They offer PCB prototyping and assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. So whether you're making one prototype or a full product, you can go from idea to finished part fast. And ordering is straightforward. Just upload your design files like Gerbers for PCBs or STL or STEP files for 3D printing and CNC. Choose your material and quantity and get an instant quote right there on the website. If you're the kind of person who loves designing clever projects like these, PCBWay are also running their eighth project design contest where you can share your builds, get featured, and even win prizes. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. Now, let's start exploring how we can actually bring those four storage ideas to life. Now, we're not gonna come up with solutions for all of these in one video. However, what we can do now is start brainstorming how we're going to tackle each one. Now again, I received many fantastic comments on the first video in this series, but still only around 10% of people who watched the video actually commented. So even if you don't have any particular ideas that you want to share, can I ask that you very simply let me know which of these four solutions you think you will be most interested in? That way I can gauge the wider interest and decide what to focus on first. So if you like the active dry box option, simply comment with the number one. For a large, simple cabinet, comment two. For the full-on vending machine or jukebox, comment three. And for inline drawing, comment with a number four. You can comment with more than one number if you like. I'll scoop up everything from the comments and use the feedback to guide our direction. So as I've had a couple of weeks worth of thinking time, here are some ideas that I've had for each category so far. Number one, active dry boxes. A couple of years ago, I tried to make the simplest filament dry box I could with a Tupperware style box and some 3D printed parts. It works very well, but there have been some issues that I've learned from. Firstly, the specific system of box that I used isn't available everywhere in the world when YouTube and my channel are. I had a lot of comments from people asking for an alternative box that they could find locally. What I think we need is a way for anyone to use any kind of box that could be found where each person lives. The most common low cost boxes are things like cereal containers, but there will be many other options that fit a filament spool. What possibly made my solution even more difficult is that I use desiccant packs containing calcium chloride. These are great for keeping a very low humidity inside the box, but it means the box has to be bigger as a result. So I want many different box styles and shapes to be usable so that it becomes a solution that anyone can use. So what about the active part? Well, what many of you told me was that you wanted to be able to either dry the filament while it was in the dry box, or at least be able to recharge the desiccant. Some manufacturers have had a go at this solution. Two that spring to mind are Polymaker's Polydryer and Sunlu's SP2. Both of these separate the filament storage box from the dryer. The idea being that once the filament's dry, you can take the box off, seal it up, and use it for storing the filament. The big problem with both of these options is that if you want more than one box for your filament, it can become very expensive as you have to buy each manufacturer's specific box. Also, what happens if you invest in one of these systems and buy multiple boxes, and then a couple of years down the line, your dryer breaks and the manufacturer no longer makes them? You're left with lots of expensive storage boxes. What if we could use a very similar system, but design a universal connection method that would work on any box you can find locally? 
all we really need is some kind of connector in the box that allows air to pass through and then a filament dryer that has corresponding connectors. I couldn't help seeing if this idea has any legs so I've already knocked up a very basic dry break style connector that's cheap and easy to 3D print which I'll be fitting to one of my dry boxes and a filament dryer so that I can experiment. Watch this space as I think we could make something that works quite quickly with this one. So option two, the large cabinet idea. What I think we would need to be very careful to avoid is having to all use the same cabinet. Much like the dry box issue, you need to be able to use whatever you can find near to you to keep the cost down. The big problem I can see with this one is not only drawing a large volume of air inside the cabinet, but doing it quickly so that when you open the door, any moist air that enters is dried or removed quick enough to stop it being absorbed into any of your filament. Some of you use dehumidifiers inside the cabinet. Others have other solutions. I haven't given this one as much thought as some of the others, but I wonder if we could have some kind of system that uses some kind of large desiccant hopper outside of the cabinet that the air can be circulated through quickly when the door is closed and then the desiccant dried either automatically or manually when it gets too damp. The big downside to this one in my eyes is that it doesn't have any method for actually drying the filament specifically, only maintaining it. Need some thought. Option three for the fully automated vending machine is going to be a big project. This one's going to need a large cabinet style container, some kind of carousel style rack that rotates, mechanisms for picking and delivering the filament and probably some kind of airlock for the spools being picked so that we don't run into the large cabinet problem of letting in damp air. I really like the challenge of this one, but it's going to take a lot more thought and I'm not sure how many other people will actually build one themselves. I feel like we do have to do it though, just to see if we can actually solve all of the filament storage issues in a money no object project. And then finally, inline drying is technically possible, especially for the more hygroscopic filaments. Anything that absorbs moisture quickly will also give up the moisture quite quickly too, so it could be a good solution for materials like PA or nylon. We'd also need to find a way of doing it that costs a lot less than the commercial options though. The basics of filament drying are that you need to excite the moisture inside the filament with heat to get it moving around, and then you need to have dry air next to it to take any moisture particles away. Different filament can handle different temperatures and something like PLA can only tolerate being heated to around 55 degrees, which means that the moisture moves around less and it takes longer to draw it out of the filament. Filament like nylon can get a lot hotter, so it doesn't need to be processed for as long to remove the moisture. This makes inline drying more practical, but there are some challenges to overcome. So tell me your thoughts. I want ideas for each category. I want additional categories if we've missed anything. And if nothing else, a comment with a number telling me which option you're most excited about. Your feedback is what will guide this whole project. And without it, it's just me sitting in a room coming up with ideas. From here on, I imagine that I'll start making videos showing the progress of each physical storage solution. I'm fully aware that I've completely ignored the need for keeping track of each spool of filament and any kind of database. This is partly because I haven't given it too much thought and partly because it's clear that we needed to work on the physical solutions first. I will very much be looking at how we keep track of everything with each of these four options as we develop them and I really want to know how you think we should tackle the issue with each physical solution too. So hit subscribe if you want to see what comes next. Thanks for watching and commenting and I'll see you in the next one.